a large part of redox chemistry is understanding if a reaction will occur. Now, the guiding principle is the two things here. A reaction will occur if the reductant is strong enough or a strong enough reductant to reduce the oxidant, or vice versa. A reaction will only occur if the oxidant is strong enough to oxidize the reductant, because the oxidant is the thing that gets reduced by the reductant. And for a reaction to happen, the reductant needs to be strong enough to make this happen. But the question is, how do you know if it's strong enough? Well, that's where this comes in handy. This is the electrochemical series, and it shows you how strong oxidants are and how strong reductants are. The rule of thumb goes, if the oxidant, which is on this side of the electrochemical series, if the oxidant is higher than the reductant, you will have a reaction that will occur. So let's look at some examples and predict if we'll see a reaction occur in these examples. So here's our first example, which is adding iron into a solution of copper sulfate. The first thing we need to be aware of is what is present in this scenario. And in copper sulfate, you've got copper two positive ions and sulfate ions. By adding in iron, you've also got iron solid. Now this is a solution, and that's why I've written the water there. Sometimes water plays a part in these reactions as well. So let's have a look at where these things are on our electrochemical series. All right, copper two ions are just above me here, and iron solid is just to my right, about there. Okay, so what we have here is the, re the oxidant, being copper two ions, is above our iron solid. That means we will see a reaction occur. Now, I've done a demonstration like this in another video. So in this case, we will see a reaction because we have a strong enough oxidant to oxidize our reductant. So here's our second example. Um, this is another reaction I've done in a video, but this is where we're adding solid copper to silver nitrate. The first thing to be aware of is what is present. Silver nitrate is a mixture of silver ions and nitrate ions. We've got solid copper because we're adding copper to it, and water's present because it's an aqueous solution. It's always there if it's aqueous. So this is where these things are on our electrochemical series. And again, you can see that the silver ions are above my solid copper. So we will see a reaction here. This is my last example for you. We've got zinc nitrate and we're adding in pure iron. So in this case, you can see that the zinc ions are below our pure iron, which is here down that way. So therefore we will not see a reaction occurring here because our zinc ions are not strong enough to make this reaction happen.